going on everybody? Chef Ari here in the house, man, and we're going to do another video for you. Uh, what are we cooking up today? We are cooking up some Jamaican Escovich Snapper. But of course, you, know, you can't start anything else without a cocktail, and today we're doing Bombay Sapphire with a little grenadine and a little triple sec, yes? These last few months, I've started to take a lightning, a liking to gin. So, there you have it. You know, let the gin speaks for itself. So, I'm here now in South Florida, people. Yes, private chef, caterer, personal chef as well. So, we do everything for our clients. You know, meal prep and all. And you can find me, you know, chefari.com, chefari Twitter, chefari show, uh, Facebook. I am Chef Ari on Instagram. So, Escovich snapper or Escovich fish. Ah, uh, not just, you won't just find it as a street food, but you can find it in most Jamaican homes, you know, being cooked definitely on the weekends, um, on Saturdays for sure, and uh, sometimes during the week. But, you know, sometimes you just feel like that's what you want. And uh, if you go to the beach, um, Helsha Beach, you can definitely get you some good Escovich snapper. And, you know, the fish there is fresh. Out of the ocean. Yes. From sea to stove to plate. Trust me. You can't get fresher than that unless you're jumping out of the boat right into your mouth. Anyway. We have our usual suspects. Kind of sort of some of our usual suspects. We're getting our heat started here. All right. So what we're going to do first, we're going to season up our fish. And I'll tell you as we go along what we have for this dish. So, first of all, we got our snapper. And we're doing fillets today. Typically and traditionally, this is done with the whole fish. And I really wanted to do it with the, the fillet, you know, to make it go a little quicker and explain a few other things as well. So, we got our fillet. And what we did after taking it off the bones. We went ahead and we scored, I'm going to show you real quickly, scored the filet, nice sharp knife. And then we put them on a plate in between paper towels just to get them nice and dry, pat them dry, nice and dry, put them in the fridge, you know, let it sit for a minute. And now we're going to season that up, all right? So we got our spice blend here. And we're going to season both sides. And the good thing about when you season, when you make the scores, we can actually add a little oil to this, to both sides of the filet. Well, what I'm using today is a little grapeseed oil with our olive oil blend. So we get a nice and healthy, good flavors. Not a lot of oil in the fish, just enough. So when I put this seasoning down, you know, that seasoning is gonna stick. Yes, so season up, pat, dry, pat the seasoning into the filets. We're seasoning both sides, not that one side thing. Because, you know, you're eating both sides of the fish, right? So guess what? Both sides of the fish need to be seasoned. All right? All right. So we got that going. And, of course, you can excavate pretty much any fish. But, you know, we just tend to like this cool snapper fish here. In not only in Jamaica but in the Caribbean, but you know, tastes good, and um, the flesh is right. It's just good. It's just a good wholesome fish to have. So we're gonna add some oil to our pan here that's been heating up, and what we're gonna do is add our fish to that. All right. So what you want to do, season both side, is take your fish. And you want to lay it, listen. Yeah, sounds right about right. So instead of just dropping it in the pan, you're going to lay the fish from the end that's closest to you and just lay it away from you. Then you just want to put a little pressure on it. And it's like, Chef, why? Just to make sure that it sort of, you know, it doesn't puff up as much because the, the, the thing. The scoring of the fish is to help to prevent that a, to a certain degree. So you just want to put a little pressure on it with your hand. And then we're going to come back here 
and we're gonna put the rest of the fish in. Okay, that's been scored. And I promise you, I was gonna show you how to score the fish. It is real simple. You wanna make sure that your knife is nice and sharp though, okay? And all you're doing is just making little slits, gentle pressure, and just score it all the way along the length of the fillet. And if you notice, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the fish. This is not a hot job. This is not where you, you know, no, that's not what you want. All right, so we want to season both sides. And like I said earlier, the scoring of the fish will have to get more seasoning in it. All right, put that down, wash off. So while we're doing that, while that is happening, let's talk about this fish. So yes, I did say that we had a whole fish and that's what we did, took the, took the meat, and this is what's left. Now you're like, all right, chef, I'm just going to throw this in the garbage. No, do not do that. At least not until I tell you to. Why? Because you can make some very good fish broth, fish stock, fish fumet with this. All right? So what you want to do is rinse them off nice and good, cut them up in pieces, you know, so it can fit in the pot, head and all. Cold water, thyme, some aromatics, you know, carrots, uh, onion, what do you got? Peppers, some garlic, some carrots, some celery. And um, you can add some allspice berries as well. And maybe a little uh, parsley stem. And then you want to just bring that up to a boil, about 30, 40 minutes, take it off, let it cool, strain it off. You got some nice fish broth for to make fish soup, or as we will say in Jamaica, fish tea. All right, now we're gonna check our fish. So what I'm looking for, that's a nice, sort of sear on the fish. Let's turn that back over. All right. Yeah, need a couple more minutes. Not too much. So that's your fish for your fillet. I mean your fish bones to make your stock. Alright. So as soon as this is done, actually I can I can flip it over now. And I did have like a cool fish spatula. And I think I lost it. If anybody can relate as a chef, and most chefs, all chefs, we hate losing anything. I don't care if it's a toothpick. Why? Because you're going to have to replace it. Now I'm going to have to replace my Forstner fish spatula. So I'm a little, I'm a little bummed about that. All right? All right. So we flipped our fish. We've gotten a nice sear on the side. I'll make sure that I have... My plate, I just rinse it off. I want to make sure that I have my plate ready. Because once it's, actually I don't even need this plate actually. Because once it's seared and cooked through, we're just going to put it directly on the plate and then we're going to make the escovite sauce. Okay, give me one second. Let's get, make sure we have our accoutrements. So for the fish sauce, we have a melange of peppers, red, green, and gold. Ja Rastafari. <laughs> we got some carrots, some shredded carrots. We got some onions, some garlic, some ginger, thyme, and I got some tomatoes. So I got some cherry tomatoes and I got some sun-dried tomatoes. Traditionally, those are not in the in the in the um, escovie sauce, but guess what? I feel like putting it down in there. Um, and of course. 
You can have this with each sauce and I add some allspice berries and I also added some cumin seeds to that just because I wanted to. Yes. All right. I think that's good. All right. Now, fish, shrimp, they don't take a long time to cook, all right? And this is done, especially when you're doing the filling. That's why I took it off the bone, because I wanted it to cook a little quicker, all right? So that's done, and we're just gonna put it right on the plate. I'm not even, you know, we don't even have to worry about draining it on paper towel, no. You don't need to. All right. So we actually started the plate presentation just like that. All right. And the re another reason why I love this, let's put this over here for a sec. Everything is done in one pot. <laughs> yes, everything is done in one pot. So while that's getting happy, we're gonna get some things ready here, or garlic, I didn't chop any, but I just wanna do that. All right, Escovitch, where did it come from? So the term and the method of pre preparation, it was to preserve um, meats and fish, and it came from the Spaniards in Spain when they came to you know, settle in the island for a minute before they got you know, chased off. <laughs> back in the 16th century or so. And the original word was called escabeche. All right, so we got our oil, and we're gonna add our onions, all of it. We're gonna add our garlic, yes. When we're gonna add our peppers, all of it, all at once, and we're gonna add our carrots, all at once. And we're gonna get our sun-dried tomato. Get those ready. So like I said, escovitch was a way of preserving because the escovitch sauce has vinegar in it. This is a preservative, yes. So it was cooked, the fish is cooked, and you make the sauce and then just pour it, you know, over the fish and uh, or meat and then sit, you know. So not only are you preserving, but you're actually adding extra flavor, all right? So we're just gonna cut our, we have sun-dried tomato here. I just wanted to add that. Why? Because I feel like I could. Sun-dried tomato. And for your vinegar, you can use cane vinegar, um, rice wine vinegar, apple cider vinegar. Yes, because they're not they're not overly strong in terms of the flavor, you know. So you don't want them to take away from the flavor of your fish. So you want to let that sit for a little bit. Make sure the peppers get a little softened and the onions and carrot. So we're gonna add some spices here, you know, some onion, some onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, you know, some cumin, coriander, you know, the usual people. And we're gonna add some thyme, all right? And of course, we're going to add scotch bonnet. Yes, scotch bonnet, see? All right, if you notice, these are very rugged on the outside. That's one way you can tell. They are a little different from the habanero, which is nice and smooth on the outside. All right, there you go, your scotch bonnet. And we got the half of a one here and a whole smaller one. And so the beauty of this dish is that the spices, this, the, the, you know, yes. I, mm, Mmm, when you cut into a scotch bonnet and you smell that fruitiness, oh my god, yes. So, you want this to be a little spicy, I'm just saying, alright? And we're going to add our scotch bonnet, 
right to the pan. All right? So don't wish out on me now. Come on, don't wish out on me. You know, make it spicy. And now we're going to add our vinegar. And just let that come to a boil. All right? So we got that. And while that is coming to a boil, we're going to add, oh, we need to add our, our sun-dried tomato, no? Yes, but we don't want that. So our sun-dried tomato, we're gonna add that, come to a boil, yes. And we're also going to add our allspice, all right? So, a couple of things I have left that I'm going to add to the dish. So, Caribbean stews. Culandro. Sort of like cilantro's cousin. Doesn't have the sort of powdery taste that most people don't like with cilantro. Um, and of course, you know, it's a genetic thing, okay? Um, but we use this a lot in our soups and stews. And I'm opting to use it in the Escovitch today. So we're taking that a traditional and making a little non-traditional. We're going to also add some green onions to that. Yes, chock full of flavor. Yes. All right. Uh, next step. A little more flavor. We're gonna add a little citrus flavor to this dish. So we got a microplane, little cool fancy grater, and add a little zest from our lemon. Now, when your face is over this pot right now, you're smelling the vinegar, yes. And of course, it's going to tantalize your nostrils, it's, you know, like it's burning, but no, Mm, yes, so you don't want to be you like, you know, head in the pot too much too long. All right Zest Yes I remember this doesn't take too long You add a little spice Yes, extra it's All right, niceness and The other thing I'm going to add to this is some butter now the butter is just to add a little luxuriousness to the sauce. Some people don't, but guess what? This is my dish, All right? Yes. And we're gonna turn the heat off right now. Yes, turn the heat off. And we're gonna bring our fish over. So let's stir this butter in the sauce. Now, my chef, can I use, I don't know, serrano peppers, jalapeno peppers, you know, one of them, you know, chill that they ain't so hot? No. You want to do it right, so make it with some scotch bonnet peppers. All right? So now we're just going to put this stuff on the fish. All right, spoons out the way, get this knife out the way, right there on our cutting board. And now we're just gonna lay it right across the top of this. So you got your carrots, your scotch bonnet, your peppers, your garlic, your allspice berries, Ah, ooh, na 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 na, yeah. And now, because we want a little of the sauce, so we're just gonna a little of the sauce right over the top. Ah, uh, yes. Now, if you're doing this, you know, with the whole fish, I definitely recommend that you actually deep fry that fish so it gets nice and crispy. Because that's the best part. So, let's add some of our butter vinegar sauce. All right, just like that. All around, all around, all around. Oh, 
Okay. Guess what? The dish is done. And, you know, I know my friends are going to laugh at me because, you know, I have, I have this thing for cilantro. I eat it. And, of course, you got to have a sprig of cilantro somewhere. Why not here? Thank you. Don't forget, buy the book, Tasty Islands, on Amazon. Yes, please. And you can catch me on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show on Mondays, 9.30 in the morning. Peace out, Chef Harry, Escovich Fish, ta -da!